Uh, okay, good morning. So, as usual, we are supposed to do the homework solutions. Okay, so the first question, let us read it. I hope that now you have a little bit more experience to solve harder problems. So, consider the following equation. The sum of the solutions of this equation in the interval 0 degrees less than or equal to x less than 180 degrees is equal to what? So you are supposed to find it. I have already put the degree sign here for you. So you just need to pi, find and type the number. Okay, of course, I don't want just to solve the problem. What, what, how do you think about the problem? Again, I'm just trying to make it clear so that this combination should look familiar to your eyes, you know? Because what do you see here? You have sine of an angle, cosine of a different angle. And then you see, it is not hard to see that on the right-hand side, the same angles repeat themselves, but in different order. Okay, so if you are familiar with the formulas of sine of addition formula or subtraction formula for cosine, it is not that hard to make at least a little bit of connection between what you see and that formula, yes? But then the next step becomes immediately clear to you because if you put the formulas in front of you, you see that these two combinations should be next to one another, yes? They have to be together. But one of them is on the left, the other one is on the right. And then, of course, it is not hard to understand. What should we do now? You can move this one to the other side. So this is why I'm saying that if you have a little bit of memory about the combinations, if they don't look familiar to you, then of course there is no point. But if you look familiar, then you know where to look for. This is a logical step to take. So I keep sine 5x on the left. I have this one on the right. And then I move this to the other side. So sine 2x cosine 3x. Okay, of course, I don't expect you to have this exactly in your memory, but you, I hope that you understand this is the sine. This is a, a subtraction formula, okay? Either for sine or for cosine. You put the formulas and you realize that this is the subtraction formula for sine. Yes? So then it is not hard to see. So the formula, let me write it here. If in the formula sheet you will see this formula sine of u minus v is equal to sine u cosine v minus sine v cosine u. Okay, this is the formula that you see in the formula sheet. And then you can immediately compare that this combination is this combination, but here 3x is playing the role of u, 2x is playing the role of v. Okay, so I copy and paste the left side. What should I write for the right side? So, this is the right hand side, so I compact, write it compactly like this. Sine u is 3x in this problem, minus v is 2x in this problem. Yes? And then it, it, it becomes very simple. What is 3x minus 2x? It's just simply x. So sine 5x is equal to sine x. Then if you again remember that this is a standard trigonometric equation and then you remember the formulas, then of course immediately you can solve it, yes? What is the formula? I give the role of box to this and I give the role of circle to this. So what happens, do you remember, if two signs are equal? This is a standard equation. So either the box is equal to the circle uh, and then of course this shows you that you have to solve it in degree mode. So this becomes plus n times 360 degrees or what? 5x equals to 180 degrees minus x plus n times 360 degrees. Okay, so from here, I move this to the left, it becomes 4x, but I want to have x isolated, so I divide everything by 4, so x becomes n times what? 90 degrees. Here, I move x to the other side, it becomes 6x, and I divide everything by 6. So what happens? It becomes x. 180 divided by 6 becomes 30. Plus, this divided by 6 is 60. 
Okay, so let me close it. Okay, so now, uh, but I have to find all the answers in this interval. But you have to do it as do a one by one. So let us concentrate here. There is no point to give negative values, even though technically negative values are also acceptable, but not in this case, because if I put negative values, I will get negative answers, which is not acceptable. Can I put zero? Uh, yes. yes. So what do I get? Zero degrees. Zero is acceptable because equality, because of the equality sign. Can I put one? Yes, it gives me 90 degrees. Can I put two? No. no. Because if I put two, it becomes 180 degrees, but 180 degrees in that problem is excluded. So 180 is not acceptable. But that's it. I get two answers from the first formula. Here, for the same reason, I cannot put negative values, and then I put, for example, zero. What do I get? 30 degrees. It is acceptable. When I put one, I get 90 again. And then when I put what? Two. two, it becomes 150. Yes, and then? There is not possible. These are the answers. But be careful here. 90 degrees is just one answer, but it comes up from two formulas. So the sum is what? Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 30 degrees, and 100. 50 degrees. So what's the answer? 270 degrees. And that is the answer. 270 is something that you have to type here. So again, I am telling you, you have to be aware of your mistakes. This will work only if you have tried the problem a priori before me solving it. Even if you stuck and then you cannot continue, when you see the solution after dealing with a problem with a problem for a little bit longer time, then it will go to your brain faster. You can keep it in your memory longer. But if you just come here and see that I solved the problem, it seems simple. But that shows for the quiz it was not simple. Because when you want to do it, you don't know how to do it. So that's it. So we go to the next uh, problem. This one's a little bit hard, but I have given you a hint. If this hint was not there, I will consider it hard, but this hint is there. So let me read the problem. Let X and Y be angles such that this happens and that happens. So X is somewhere between 20 degrees and 30 degrees, and Y is somewhere between 10 degrees and 15 degrees. If sine of 2X plus Y is 4 over 5, and cosine of 2X minus, 5, minus Y is 2 over 5, then sine 2y turns out, according to the problem, turns out to be equal to 1 over 25 times 8 minus 3 square root of a. The exact value of a is equal to what we are supposed to do that. I agree. If I didn't provide you this hint, my tweet was not that easy. Okay, so I want you to think a little bit about this yourself. So what is the best way to do it? Let me go to the board. Of course, I have given you the hint. So let me also write the hint here on the board. So I have told you 2y is equal to 2x uh, plus y uh, minus 2x minus y. First of all, this hint is true, yes? It is not something false. Because if I ask you, is this true? You would say yes. If I multiply the minus sign in, minus 2x and 2x are gone. Minus minus y is y, plus y is 2y. So that is the truth. It's not a lie, yes? So we have to start using it. But how do you think it will help me to solve the problem? The reason, if I didn't give you this, the risk was that people start using addition and subtraction formula for here. So they might say that sign of the first one, cosine of the second one, and the other way around. And the same thing for cosine, cosine of the first one, cosine of the second one, things like that. By giving you this hint, I wanted, you, I wanted to prevent you from doing this. Because imagine for a while that you open it up and open it up, then what? Yes? Yeah, there will be a lot of things involved, okay? But I have given you this hint, and you know that if I want to answer A, a is my unknown sitting on the right hand side. If I know this number, 5, 7, whatever, in principle I can find A. So by just reading and contemplating a little bit, 
you will understand the target of the problem. If I ask you what the target now, what is my strategy now? My strategy is to calculate this number. Because if I have it as a number, then I put it here and I'll find my A. And now that if you understand this is your strategy, then this hint becomes very uh, handy, yes? Because you understand that to solve this problem, your strategy is to solve what? Sign to what? If this hint was not there, you might go and use the formula for the double angle formula, sine to y. So, but if you are a little bit experienced, you see there is a reason that I have given you this. So it means that I am somehow indirectly telling you, don't use the normal formulas, it's not going to work. So I don't, this step, is it natural for you based on the hint? Yes or no? Because sine to y has a formula separately in formula sheet. But if you write that, it will not go anywhere. Okay? So 2x minus. I hope that by this explanation, this is the way that you have to think. This seems natural. But then, of course, the challenge starts from here. What do you think I will do? Of course, you shouldn't open up the pair of brackets. If you open up, you will get this back. So what should I do? Um, yes? Subtraction formula. formula by giving the role of u to the whole combination and giving the role of v to the whole combination. Yes? So what happens? It becomes sine of u multiplied by cosine of v minus the other way around, yes? Yes? And hopefully you understand this is a good thing to do. Because in order to answer this question mark, I translated that problem into the new language. Then I need this, I need to know this number, I need to know this number, I need to know this and that. But the good news is that two of them are directly given to me. Okay, so this means that this is exactly more or less the same type of problems you had in the quiz. The ideas are very similar, you know, but of course they are new problems. So this one is given. Uh, this one is also given. So I can put the numbers directly here. But the problem is this one and that one. Yes? I need to find this number. I need to find that number. But this shouldn't be a problem in front of you. You ask yourself, I want to calculate sine 2x minus y. What do I have about 2x minus y? I have its cosine. So this problem is a standard. You want to answer what sine is if cosine is given. Isn't it the same problem we did more or less in the quiz? Yeah. Yes? No, from sine, you should be able to immediately find cosine. And what is this one? This is cosine of 2x plus y. What do I have about 2x plus y in the problem? I have its sine. So I have sine, I want cosine. That's the same problem, yes? It's a very standard problem, so you have to know. That. So what should I do? Can you remember? Where, where is my starting point for this? What should I do? I need to write the equation. You see the problem is long, but it is designed for this purpose that you work with what you have, the information you have. Okay? So what is the starting point? If you don't remember this, then of course you are in trouble. Because the problem is hard on the one hand, and then you are not sure about what you are supposed to do, then everything will mess up. Okay? So what do you think I will write now? This you have to remember. There is nothing I can help you here. Okay? The, the strategy becomes clear. I want to answer this question mark, which is a sign. What do I have? I have the cosine. So what do you think I will write here to continue? Anyone else? Anyone else? What should I write here? Okay, so that is what I'm, t I'm trying to tell you. This is not, this is just remembering things. Yes? Uh, sine, uh, cosine is equal to what? 
sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. That's it. So what I write, I will write sine squared of what? 2x minus y plus what? Cosine squared of 2x minus y equals to 1. What do I have? I have cosine on the board. It is 2 fifths, yes? So this one to power 2, which is what? 4 over 25, yes? Are you with me? I just put that here. It's equal to 1. So then what happens? It means sine squared 2x minus y equals to what? 1 minus 4 over 25. Can you do it in your head? 1 minus 4 over 25. What is that? 21 over 25. And then what happens for sine? Tell me. Plus or minus. So it becomes plus or minus square root of 21 over 5. And then of course I have to have a choice here. Which one is that? Okay. This one is a little bit tricky, so I, I have given you conditions there. So let us try to do this. I will consider it a very hard problem for you might be if you don't remember what to do. But still, it is doable. So how can I understand? Because that, that assumption that x is between 20 and 30 and y is between 10 and 15 is given for some reason. And that's exactly the reason, because I am, I'm not sure which one to choose. And it matters. Yes? So probably that piece of information is useful for here. Okay, so what can I do? So I need to understand that properly. How can you understand what is the limit between 2x, what is the limit of 2x minus y? So I would say that x is somewhere between 20 degrees and what? 30 degrees. Okay, can you help me? I want to go from these two pieces in my information to know something about the limits of 2x minus y. What do you think I will do now to it? Look at what you want. This is the strategy. If you learn it once, it will work all the time. So what I want to talk about is 2x minus y. What I have, I have two pieces of information separately. What, what is that? 15 degrees. Okay. Using these two pieces of information, I need to know something about 2x minus y. What do you think will be the first step? Yes? You see that the maximum value of y is uh -huh. always less than the least uh, value of x. Uh -huh. so but this is 2x now. So 2x yes. is yes. automatically uh, more than 1y. Yes. So the angle in total becomes positive. This is one way, okay? But if you want to do the calculation, I want you to learn that one. I, I don't, because working with inequalities is a little bit hard, so I want to be on the safe side. Because I see a 2 there, I mot it's motiv it motivates me to multiply this by 2. Okay, so this is the first thing I will do. So it becomes 40 degrees. Uh, I'm not saying what, what you said is completely right, but I want you to understand an alternative way of to do it safely if it's a little bit complicated. Okay? So everyone agrees with that. But the problem is that I need minus y. But if I want minus y, I have to make it minus. So what does it mean? It means that I have to multiply it by a minus sign. Then there is something in Math 1c that you have to remember. What is that? When you multiply by a minus, you have to flip the sign. Okay, there are two ways to flip the sign. I multiply it by minus, it becomes minus 10 degree, I have to flip the sign minus y, and then I have to flip the sign minus 50, that's okay. But then I have another problem, because I want to add this to this, these are less than, less than, these are greater than, greater than. I can only add them if I have the same directions. So this, I can write it the other way around with this symbol. Is that hard for you to understand or not? What this sentence means minus 10 is greater than minus y is greater than minus 15. This sentence means minus 15 is less than minus y, less than minus 10. Do you feel that they are the same thing? But what is the benefit of it? So for me, I have it in my memory. If I want to multiply it by minus sign, I, I, I automatically write it like this. 
Yes? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. And then I add them side by side safely. This one plus that one is how much? Uh, 25 degrees. Or just 25. Yes, this becomes 2x minus y, and then this becomes 50. So what you said is completely right, but I can do better. Now I can understand that 2x minus y is definitely somewhere between 25 degrees and 50 degrees. And if this is the case, it means 2x minus y is in the first quadrant. And if it is in the first quadrant, which one I should choose? Positive, Positive one. So there is no space, so let me just clear this. So from here, this was important. But again, you know that in the... Okay, so let's continue. This is the number that I got. Okay, but I hope that you are not lost, yes? Now this question mark is answered. So this is also answered. Uh, what should I now answer? The last question mark. Okay, which information is probably suitable for that one? The other one, yes? Sine 2x plus y. Where, where is my starting point again? The same thing, but for 2x plus y, yes? So it becomes what? Sine... Uh, 2x plus y squared plus cosine 2x plus y squared is equal to 1. But which one I have this time? I have the sine. 4 over 5. If I square it, it becomes what? 16 over 25 equals plus cosine 2x plus y squared is equal to 1. So this means cosine squared 2x plus y is equal to what? 1 minus 16, 25. Do it in your head. What's the answer? Uh, 9 over 25. 9 over 25. And then again, with the same story. So cosine 2x plus y becomes what? Plus or minus 3 over 5. And then I have to choose again which one. But now I want you to practice this one. Now I need to make this combination. This combination is even simpler. I don't need to multiply by minus sign or whatever. What do I need to do? Can you see that? I have 2x here, less than, less than, and I have y here, less than, less than. And I want to add them. So let us just add them. What's the answer? 2x plus y is between 50 degrees and what? 75 degrees. But again, it is in the first quadrant. I, I didn't want to bother you. I could design it in a way that one of them goes to the second quadrant. But I just want you to learn you that this one is also the technique that you can use these pieces of information that work. But anyway, both of them are positive. Yes? So both of them are positive, so I clean that one. Okay. So I will write it here and then clean it because we don't have any space now. Okay. So I have this one. So I go back there. So what should I do? Sine 2y that I was looking for is equal to, I put those four numbers in place. The first number is 4 over 5, multiply. The second number is 2 over 5, okay? Minus, these two numbers I got it myself. So what is that? Square root of 21 over, multiplied by 3 over 5. 4 times 2, 8 over 25, and then this becomes minus 3 square root of 21 over 25. And then, this is my calculation. This is the calculation given by the problem. They have to match. But looking at that factor of 1 over 25, it motivates me to do what? Factor 1 over 25 out, then it is 8 minus 3 square root of 21. This is my calculation, and that up there is the problem's calculation, yes? This up there is the given by the problem. This I got it. Compare them. What is A? A is 21. Yes? I, 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 of course, I consider this a little bit even higher than A level. But I, that is not the point. The point is that if you think logically and you have a minimum amount of information in your head, you can solve much harder problems. And that's the goal. Okay? So I don't think the question of this type you will even get in national exam. 
But it, I want you to understand that your math knowledge is actually quite good. You can solve very hard problems if you know how to do it. Any questions? How would you figure out on your own? Or not figure out, of course you would be able to notice if you had it, but how would you know to expand? To no, because I remember when I was at your age, I suffered. Yes? <laughs> and I would want to prevent you from suffering, so I have given you this hint. But I remember when I was at your age, I don't remember if I could it, probably I couldn't. But when I was 14, I remember it, now I am 52. <laughs> okay? The problem is that I was so excited to see the solution, I told you it changed something in my brain and re remained with me. Of course, I have been teaching it for a long time. I don't know if I'm just doing something else, I could still remember it. Yes? But that's the whole point. At least you don't need to remember it for 30 years. You just remember it until May. That's okay, okay? And then that's up to you if you want to forget or still continue remembering. And by the way, that is the only thing we can do, okay? If you are extremely smart, might be you can guess this one yourself. But by the way, it doesn't need that much smartness. Might be you do some trial and error. The problem is that you have to be stubborn. Okay? You do a lot of things, it doesn't work, as I show you my scratch papers, and then I will do find a way, finally, okay? Or not. And I told you, the majority of time, the answer is not. Not for me, for the smartest people on the planet. Otherwise, we didn't have any unsolved problems in front of us. Yes? Okay. Uh, so, we go to the next problem. This problem, I would say this is a standard. And even in some Swedish books, they have them. Okay? And uh, prove the following identities. Sine x over 1 plus cosine x equals to 10 x over 2. And then sine x minus y times sine x plus y is sine x squared minus sine y squared. It's a very nice formula. It seems like a conjugate rule. Yes? Yeah, it's a nice formula. Okay, but let me uh, try to solve this. Is more. So let us start with this one. If you want to solve this problem, this is one of, I, even though it might be in the books, in Swedish books, it's an A level. But this is not hard to understand. You want to prove an identity, so most of the time you start from one side and go to the other side. Sometimes it is too complicated, you simplify the left hand side up to a point, and then you go to the right hand side, simplify it, and then if you are lucky and get the same answers, you can conclude that these are also equal. So, what do you think I will do for this one? Which, which way you prefer to go? Left to right, because for the left ones you have formulas. Yes? So, I will start from the left hand side. Okay, so let me see if I'm recording. I will not ruin my weekend. Okay? So, this one, it becomes sine x minus y multiplied by sine x plus y. If you decide to start from the left hand side, there is only one natural way to do it. Okay? So, what should I do? I need to understand this is a formula, and that is the subtraction formula for sine. And I also need to understand that this is addition formula for sine. If you don't remember, then you just look it up. I have it in my memory. So it becomes sine of the first one times cosine of the second one minus the other way around. Sine of the second one cosine of the first. Yes? And then you read this from the formula sheet. It is extremely similar to this except that you have a plus sign here. So it becomes sine x cosine y plus sine y cosine x. Now, if you have studied the previous lessons, this shouldn't be hard for you to detect the pattern. So what do I have? I have this number here and there. I have this number here and there. Once subtracted, once added, and I want to multiply them. Whenever this happens, there is one rule for it, and that's the conjugate. So it becomes what? It becomes the first one squared minus the second one squared. Yes? yes? Okay. But of course, can I write the first one squared, second one squared here? Yes. yes, because that's a product. If it's addition, no, I have to say the first one squared, second one squared, two times the first one times the second one. But for the product, I can raise it to power two, raise it to power two separately. So this becomes sine x squared cosine y squared and minus the same thing here, sine y squared and then cosine x squared. Okay. 
First of all, if you have a little bit of experience, you understand that you are on the right track. Because when you look at the right hand side, two of them are here. Yes? And like this. So it is not that bad. But of course, the challenge is to fix it completely. And then it shows you what to do somehow. You want to have, you want to have only signs involved. But here you have a mixture of sine and cosine. So these are a strategy, a strategical thinking, you know? So I have to get rid of cosines in favor of sines. If you remember this, there is one way to do it. What should I do? Uh, I so I copy and paste sine x squared. But hopefully everyone remembers. Do you remember what should I do? If you don't remember, of course, you have to start from this one and then move one of them to the other side. Yes? yes? But anyway, I, I would prefer to write it. I have it in my memory. If you don't, you have to start from here, discover that one yourself, and put it back. So it becomes 1 minus sine y squared. Yes? And I will do the same thing for the other one. So I copy and paste the, ones, the one that I need. I want to get rid of this one. So I would write 1 minus sine x squared. This should work, because if I ask you what are, involved, what are the terms involved here, you will tell me sine x squared and sine y squared. What are the terms involved in what I want? Exactly those. So it means that there is one simple algebra left. Just open it up, yes? So it becomes what? It becomes sine x squared minus sine x squared times sine y squared. And then this one goes in, so it becomes minus sine y squared. But this one multiplied by minus minus becomes plus. Yes? And then now you are lucky because this one and that one are the same. It doesn't matter in which order I multiply. That one and that one are gone. And what is left for me is exactly the uh, right hand side. That's it. So that is the proof of this identity. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it is hard. It might look lengthy, uh, but it is not hard. Hard problems are different, you know. It doesn't matter how, even if I know all these tricks and techniques, but the hard problem is that I don't even know where to start from. Those are hard problems, okay? But this one I would consider it a little bit hard if you are not that experienced, even though this is so smaller than this one, but I will consider this harder than that one. If you don't understand the idea, might be you have a very big challenge here, because you don't have a direct formula in the formula sheet for it. Yes? Because you do not have any formula for sine. Sine is just sine. You do not have any formula for cosine. So you have to be a little bit uh, your understanding should be a little bit more. Of course, I don't consider it understanding because when I was teaching you, I tried to make you conscious about this, how you use the formulas. So here, what I understand, how I understand what to do is the angle involved. I see the angle X is the only angle involved on the left, but x over 2 is the angle involved on the right. So this observation is important here. Then, of course, that is up to you to tell me what to do. First of all, I start from the left-hand side again. But my, let me copy and paste everything in front of you. And then I hope that you know what to do now. I want to write these two things in a way that instead of having x involved, I want to have x over 2 involved, okay? And you, I promise you, you will not have any formula directly there. You have to have a better understanding of how to use the formulas. So, what should I do? x over 2 plus x over 2. Like, oh, you don't need to. So yeah, I saw your solution. You started from scratch. If you do that, I will give you the points. That is not wrong. But you don't have to prove everything from scratch every time. Okay, so what I will do, yes, double angle, double angle formula, be careful, if you go to double angle formula, you will see this in the book, in the formula sheet. 
And I told you several times, don't think it has to be 2V and this has to be V and V. Whatever is here, half of it is here and there. So of course, if I write 2V, but if I write V, what happens? Half of it is 2 sine V over 2, cosine V over 2. This I, I remember when I was teaching, I told you this. For example, if I write sine V over 2, what can I write? I can write 2 sine V over 4, cosine V over 4. Okay? So all these formulas are the consequence of this single formula by the correct interpretation. So what you sort of did, you proved the formula again for x over 2. That's not wrong. But that is, I don't want you to do that because it will, you, it will slow you down, okay? So here, what should I do? I will write as 2 sine x over 2. Cause be careful, by the way. I don't see what is happening. I cannot foresee everything. But I am thinking that, okay, at least this is good because I have x squared, uh, x over 2 involved, and that is good because I need x over 2. I can see up to here. I cannot see until the end of the problem. Okay? But now let us go to the next one. This one, let me write the formula from the formula sheet. For cosine 2v, you will have three formulas in the formula sheet. Okay? Now, you are in the same uh, situation. You want to do something, you need to use these formulas, one of them, wisely, so that it fits what you want. First of all, can you immediately tell me which one of these you prefer and why? Yes? The middle one. Why? Because under one. This minus one will get rid of the positive one. And so this is a good decision because otherwise you have to go back and forth, back and forth. How many times do you want to do that? So I made my mind. Okay? And then this is x. This is 2v. I told you again, it, is, it doesn't mean 2v and v. Whatever here, half of it is there. So can you tell me what can I write for cosine v now if I insist to use this middle one? So it becomes 2 cosine squared of what? v over 2 minus 1. This I want you to understand that this is not one formula. This is infinitely many formulas depending on what you choose for the end. Okay, so I will put it here. 1 is 1, and then instead of cosine x, I write that. Do you agree or not? Yes. So cosine squared x over 2, and then minus 1. And then I think the rest becomes very simple, because everyone can immediately see that 1s are gone. So let me write it two times. Don't worry, okay? So 2 cosine squared x over 2, yes? So these two and that two are gone. What about cosines? Here I have cosine x over 2 multiplied by another cosine x over 2. So I have two cosines x over 2, but here I have one. So one of them and one of them will be canceled. What is left for me in the numerator? Sine x over 2. What is left for me in the denominator? Cosine x over 2. And then hopefully everyone knows that sine of an angle divided by cosine of the same angle is tangent of that angle, and that is equal to the right hand side. Okay? So, I know it takes time, but this level of math is possible. Okay? The Olympiad ones are not somehow easy. So that's why if they give me the questions, I might not be able to solve it, but at least I will not be able to solve it immediately. Okay? So here, I have these tricks in my head. I see that, okay, this is x, this is x over 2, so let us get rid of x in favor of x over 2. Okay? But even though I know all these tricks, but the questions are hard that I don't know even where to start from. And that is the novel question. That's why mathematical contest problems are much harder in a harder level. Okay. So, might be the only problem here is the second problem, which is a little bit above probably national exam. But these are more or less as you want to. It's not, they are not hard. Any questions? Okay, so fortunately everything goes very fine for this video at least. <laughs>
Yes. Okay, thank you. So I will pause this one, but you can start working on any problems you want to.